In 1957 British Hawker aircraft became interested in vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, also known as VTOL aircraft. This interest may have been sparked by the British Air Staff Requirement 345, which sought a VTOL ground attack fighter for the Royal Air Force. This led to the design of the Hawker P-1127, which was made in close cooperation with Bristol. The design used an innovative vectored thrust turbofan engine called the Pegasus. A contract for two development prototypes was signed in June 1960, and the first flight followed in October 1960. Of the six prototypes built, three crashed. In 1961 the UK, the United States and West Germany jointly agreed to purchase nine aircraft developed from the P-1127, for evaluation of the performance. Hawker Siddeley manufactured the aircraft, which were designated Kestrel FGA by the UK. The Kestrel did not have a fully developed Pegasus engine, since it was only an evaluation aircraft. The first flight took place on March 7, 1964. The evaluations ended in November 1965. One aircraft had been destroyed in a crash, six were transferred to the United States for testing, and the two remaining underwent further testing at Ray Bedford. Hawker and Bristol had spent much time developing a supersonic version, designated the P-1154, to meet a NATO requirement. However NATO withdrew the requirement, and while the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy considered continuing the development, the P-1154 eventually was cancelled. In 1965, Hawker Siddeley received an order for six pre-production aircraft. The first made its maiden flight on August 31, 1966. An order for 60 production aircraft was received in early 1967. These aircraft were designated the Harrier GR-1, taking its name from a small bird of prey. The Harrier GR-1 entered RAF service on April 1, 1969. The Royal Navy trained the new ski jump technique for launching Harrys from aircraft carriers from 1977, and ski jumps were added to the carriers in preparation for the Navy version of the Harrier, the Sea Harrier. In the late 1960s Hawker Siddeley and McDonnell Douglas formed a partnership in preparation for American production of the Harrier, but it was deemed cheaper to produce the American AV-8A on the UK production lines. Because of this, all AV-8A Harriers were purchased from Hawker Siddeley. The Harrier was typically used as a ground attack aircraft, but it could also effectively engage other aircraft at short ranges. While the Harrier looked similar to the Kestrel, 90% of the Kestrel's airframe had been redesigned for the Harrier. The GR-1 was powered by the more powerful Pegasus 6 engine, had new air intakes, modified wings and strengthened landing gear. It also had hard points installed under the wings and fuselage and two 30mm Aden cannon gun pods could be fitted to the underside of the fuselage. The basic avionics of the Kestrel were upgraded, and a head-up display was added. The VTOL ability of the Harrier was praised by military strategists. It was believed that air bases would be vulnerable in high-intensity conflicts, which made the Harrier's ability to be deployed to small prepared clearings or helipads very valuable. Harriers could be spread out to dozens of small pads on the front lines. The Harrier could also operate as a short takeoff and landing, or stole, aircraft. This saved fuel and allowed more weapons to be fitted. The two largest users of the Harrier were the Royal Air Force and the United States Marine Corps. The version used by the Marine Corps was designated the AV-8A Harrier, and was similar to the GR-1. Most of the AV-8AS had the more powerful Pegasus engine that was also used in the GR-3 version. The RAF upgraded their GR-1 aircraft to GR-3 standard, with an upgraded engine, improved sensors, a laser tracker as well as integrated electronic countermeasure systems. A number of two-seat training versions were also produced. They used the T2 and T4 versions, and the Navy used T4N and T8. The US and Spain used the TAV-8A and TAV-8S. The RAF started being equipped with the Harrier GR-1 in April 1969. In 1970, the Harrier was deployed to RAF bases in West Germany, to be in the front line of a potential European conflict. In the RAF the Harrier was used for close air support, reconnaissance, and other ground attack roles. From camouflaged rough bases the Harrier was expected to launch attacks on advancing armor columns from East Germany. Harriers were also deployed to bases in Norway and Belize, a former British colony. In the Falklands War in 1982, 10 Harrier GR-3 of No. 1 Squadron operated from the aircraft carrier HMS Hermes. The Harrier GR-3 focused on providing close air support to the ground forces on the Falklands, and attacking Argentine positions, suppressing enemy artillery was often a high priority. 
The first generation of Harriers did not see further combat with the RAF after the Falklands War, although they continued to serve for years afterwards. The AV-8A Harrier entered service in the U.S. Marine Corps in 1971. A new type of light carrier equipped with Harriers was tested, the Sea Control Ship. In 1976, 14 Harriers were deployed aboard the USS Franklin D. Roosevelt for six months. The tests showed that the Harrier was capable of performing in weather where conventional carriers could not. On land, the Marine Corps was to deploy the Harriers at forward bases that could be set up in under 24 hours on any battle area. The Marine Corps also tested the ability of the AV-8A in dogfights. The tests showed that the Harrier could be effective in close-range dogfights. In 1979, the Marine Corps started upgrading their AV-8As to AV-8C standard to extend their service life. The AV-8A and AV-8C were retired by 1987. There were many potential countries interested in buying the first generation of Harriers. Ultimately, Spain and Thailand were the only countries other than the UK and the US that operated the first generation. The Spanish Harriers were designated AV-8S. Several of the Spanish Harriers were later sold to Thailand. The Sea Harrier was largely based on the Harrier GR3, but was modified to have a raised cockpit with a bubble canopy for greater visibility, and an extended forward fuselage to accommodate the Ferranti Blue Fox radar. Parts were changed to use corrosion-resistant alloys or coatings were added to protect against the marine environment. The Sea Harrier FA-2 was equipped with an improved radar, the Blue Vixen. It also had an upgraded version of the Pegasus engine, electronic countermeasures, increased range and could carry more air-to-air -air weapons. The first production Sea Harrier was delivered in 1979. Sea Harriers were deployed to the HMS Invincible and HMS Hermes from 1980 and 1981. During the Falklands War in 1982, Sea Harriers operated from the carriers HMS Invincible and HMS Hermes. 28 Sea Harriers were deployed in the war. Its primary role was air defense, and its secondary role was ground attack. The RAF GR-1 Harriers were the main ground attack force. The Royal Navy Sea Harrier Squadron shot down 20 Argentine aircraft in air-to-air -air combat. Six Sea Harriers were lost in the war. Two in combat and four in accidents or mechanical failure. The Sea Harrier was also deployed in the conflict in Bosnia, 1992-1995. It launched raids on Serb forces, and provided air support for the International Task Force during Operation Deny Flight, and Operation Deliberate Force. In 1999 NATO launched Operation Allied Force against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Sea Harriers patrolled the airspace to keep Yugoslavian aircraft on the ground. The Royal Navy retired the Sea Harrier in 2006. In 1979, India placed its first order for Sea Harriers. The first delivery was made in December 1983, and an order for 10 more aircraft was placed in November 1985. In total India operated 30 Harriers, of which 5 were 2 seat trainers. India retired the Sea Harrier in 2016. In the early 1970s, the United States and the United Kingdom started a project aimed at dealing with the inadequacies of the first-generation Harrier. The UK abandoned the project in 1975, but McDonnell Douglas in the US extensively redesigned the AV-8A to create the new AV-8B. The AV-8B has a larger composite wing with additional hard points on each side, an elevated cockpit, a redesigned fuselage and other structural and aerodynamic improvements. In August 1981 the UK rejoined the program, when British Aerospace signed a Memorandum of Understanding with McDonnell Douglas. British Aerospace became a subcontractor rather than a full partner. Four full-scale development aircraft for testing were developed, and the maiden flight took place on November 5, 1981. The first production AV-8B was delivered to the US Marine Corps on December 12, 1983. In 1985, McDonnell Douglas began work on a night attack variant. The first 66 AV-8B non-night attack aircraft were delivered to the Marine Corps in September 1989. A night attack version also served with the RAF under the designation GR-7. The technological advances incorporated into the Harrier II, compared with the original Harrier, significantly reduced the workload on the pilot. The Harrier II was the first combat aircraft to extensively employ the light and strong carbon fiber composite materials. 26% of the aircraft's structure is made of composites, reducing its weight by 217 kilograms compared to a conventional metal structure. 
Most of the first AV-8B Harrier II were upgraded to the Night Attack version or the Harrier II Plus standard. A two-seat version, the T-8V-8B was used as a trainer. The Harrier II Plus version is very similar to the Night Attack version, but has an added APG-65 Pulse Doppler radar in an extended nose, allowing it to launch advanced missiles. The AV-8B reached initial operating capability in January 1985. It saw extensive action in the first Gulf War. The first combat mission was flown on January 17, 1991. Throughout the war, the Harrier II was used for armed reconnaissance missions, and worked together with coalition forces to destroy targets. A total of 3,380 flights were made during the war, and five AV-8B were lost. In 1999, the AV-8Bs participated in Operation Allied Force. They flew 34 combat air support missions during the operation. One aircraft was lost. U.S. Marine Corps AV-8Bs took part in Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan from 2001. Four AV-8Bs began attack missions into Afghanistan on November 3, 2001. More aircraft joined later that month, and even more AV-8B units were deployed in the region in 2002. AV-8Bs flew ground support missions during the 2003 Iraq War, and flew over 2,000 sorties in one month of combat. On March 20, 2011, U.S. Marine Corps AV-8Bs joined Operation Odyssey Dawn, enforcing the UN no-fly zone over Libya. On July 27, 2014, AV-8Bs over Iraq was to provide surveillance of Islamic State forces. Surveillance operations continued after the start of Operation Inherent Resolve. Later AV-8Bs conducted air strikes against Islamic State militants. The AV-8B remain in service in the U.S. Marine Corps, although the F-35B has started to replace it. The Harrier II is expected to remain in service until 2025. The AV-8B is currently also serving in the Italian and Spanish navies. The British Aerospace Harrier II was the English version of the AV-8B. It flew for the first time in 1981, and the GR-5 entered service in July 1987. The GR-5 had many differences from the AV-8B. It had different avionics, armaments and equipment. Also, the GR-5 had a different wing design. Among the major differences from the American version, was the new Zeus ECM system. Also, the British Harrier IIs were never equipped with a radar. In 1990, the GR-7 version entered service. The GR-7 had added nighttime operational capability, and improved avionics. In 1991 all GR-5s were upgraded to GR-7 standard. One more major upgrade was made, the GR-9. It had upgraded avionics, communication systems and weapon capabilities. The Harrier II was not deployed in the Gulf War in 1991, but patrolled the no-fly zones from 1993 onwards. In 1995, a squadron of Harrier IIs carried out reconnaissance and attack missions over former Yugoslavia. During Operation Allied Force, the NATO mission over Kosovo in 1999, 12 Harrier GR-7s were deployed. They carried out 870 sorties during the operation. In 2003, the Harrier GR-7 played a prominent role during Operation Telic, the UK contribution to the US-led Iraq War. Harriers flew reconnaissance and strike missions inside southern Iraq. RAF GR-7s also were deployed to Afghanistan in 2004. In January 2007, the Harrier GR-9 began its first operational deployment in Afghanistan, replacing the GR-7s. The last British Harriers were withdrawn from the country in June 2009, after flying 8,500 sorties. On November 24, 2010, the Harrier made its last ever flight from a carrier. The Harrier II was retired in March 2011.